So I wanted to make this video just to help those that are just starting their career, or maybe you're in the middle of your career and you want to get a leg up. So I wanted to kind of lay out my entire IT career and then also add in YouTube here at the end. So if you're just interested in how much money I make on YouTube, check the timestamps and you can just fast forward to that point in time. But with that, let's jump right into this video and get over how much money I've made in my career. So I'm going to go really fast over the non-technical jobs just to kind of set the stage. One, I don't have a college degree. I only went to junior college for a couple semesters and I thought it was a waste of time. So I didn't continue any of the college education. I only have a high school diploma. So that's my background. Uh, very first job I had was 16 years old working for a production line. I was in charge of a heat press. I did the same thing 500 times. It sucked. It was the worst job I ever had, and I got paid $5.15 an hour. Uh, the next job I had after that was grocery store, and I worked in the dairy and as a cashier. Started at $6 an hour, worked there for about a year and a half, ended at $8 an hour. Uh, one big takeaway for that job, I would say, is I walked into my boss's office because I saw... Uh, somebody down the road, another grocery store was paying their cashier $7 an hour. And I was pretty fast. I said, Hey, will you match this other company? And he said, no, I'll do you one better. Since you're such a good worker, I'll give you $8 an hour. I was like, sweet. So kind of learned early at the age of 17 that you have to ask to receive. No one's just going to give you money, but you got to ask for it. And then the next job I got after that was one I hounded for six months, and that was Blockbuster Video. I, I would go in every week and be like, hey, are you guys hiring? Because I always wanted Blockbuster Video as it was something that it was very expensive to rent movies back then, and I wanted to watch a lot of movies. And, and, you know, what 18-year-old doesn't? So I worked there, uh, started at $8 an hour, ended at $12 an hour as an assistant manager after a couple years. So I kind of bounced around. This is kind of a dark point in my life because I was about 20 years old and most of my friends were at college and I was feeling a little bit left out. And if you ever seen the movie, Take Me Home Tonight uh, with Topher Grace, definitely check it out. That was me, except with all, all the excitement. I want to hear your plan. I guess my plan is to keep working at Suncoast Video until I figure out what I want to do with my life. <laughs> And uh, I worked at Suncoast and Sam Goody after Blockbuster, still making $12 an hour as an assistant manager. And that was an interesting point in my life, but definitely kind of a waste. So a whole year goes by and my brother calls me up when I was 21. He's like, hey, man, why don't you come down to Dallas, Texas? We have great jobs and I know you want to do something in, in tech and we have just everything, every opportunity you could possibly want down here. And I was like, deal. I'm, I'm coming down tonight. I packed up everything. I quit my jobs and uh, went down. So anyway, moving on, uh, I go down to Dallas, Texas. It's uh, now at this point, 2001, 2002. I work at Fry's Electronics and it was a terrible job. I absolutely hated Fry's uh, as they were just a, a bad employer, but I loved a lot of the people I worked with. So I made minimum wage, but you got commission sales if you're in computer sales. And the commissions were actually pretty decent. Uh, I just didn't like the structure of the company and a lot of the things they did to their employees I thought was a little messed up. So I moved on to Best Buy where I started as computer sales at $12 an hour, still at $12 an hour. I actually took a pay cut coming from Fry's because commission sales can pay decently. And then I moved from that over into uh, as regular technician. To get that job, I needed one certification and it was XP. I needed to be certified in Windows XP. I took the test, got the cert, and then I got hired. My pay moved from $12 an hour up to $15 an hour for Best Buy as a uh, double agent is what they call it, but it's a little in-home agent. And that was pretty awesome. I love this part of my life. Uh, I had a lot of friends. We were going out, having a good time. Uh, I was relatively very healthy at this point. And it was, man, it was just a great, uh, great time. And then uh, about a year later, a position opened up as a big business technician. And I was able to go from that uh, in home to business and become a special agent, which they gave me a badge for that one too. Uh, my old, old agent number was 2667. Uh, if you ever want to look me up, if anybody, if they still have those records, but 
needless to say, that was a lot of fun. In this during this period, I would say was really great because as I was working for there, I was going to a lot of businesses, anywhere between twenty and fifty businesses, uh, and I was got a ton of exposure to everything out there. So it was a really great time to be a technician, and really I got to learn a lot of things. I was able to lean on coworkers and really learn a lot more things than most people can when you just work for one business. So. That was great. I did move out of that position into a field management position, and I had about 20 people working under me. It wasn't as good. I I really didn't like managing people that much as it was one too many people. I had about 20 something people. And then I had a huge area to cover all of Dallas, Fort Worth for business agents. And then I had, uh, I think it was district 12, which was, or no, it was uh, district seven. It was all of Dallas. All, uh, if you were an in-home agent in Dallas, you kind of fell under my umbrella and I had to manage all those. And that was not as much fun, but it did pay a lot better at 45,000. And I got monthly and quarterly bonuses and I maxed all those bonuses out every every month and quarter. So not too bad. I think in the end, I think it was around 50, 55 with bonuses uh, as a field manager, or it was called deputy field marshal for Geek Squad. But in 2008, I actually moved past this and went back to more technical work as I wasn't really satisfied as a manager and I really didn't enjoy it. And I got paid 60K, was the very first job I got as an IT manager. And I was working for one company. It was a very, very nice job. I absolutely loved uh, the employer I worked for. And it was a great time. I was able to basically do everything I always wanted to do for any business. They basically gave me an unlimited budget. They said, hey, we just want everything to work to the best of its ability here's their checkbook. And that's what I did. I bought the best of everything. I honestly bought the best of everything times two. Usually that way, if something broke, I would just replace it and be like, there you go. And have like 15 minutes of downtime. If that during this period, I really enjoyed, I got married. I had my first child, uh, and it was just a, a lot of fun. I got bought my first house in 2009 uh, during the housing crash. Uh, so everything was great during this period. Uh, but as life goes, not everything great lasts forever. And with this job, they had a split with uh, the management. And when the split with the management happened, uh, half the personnel fell off or moved on. And I knew as an IT manager at the time, I think I was making uh, a little bit more. I think it was about 65 or 70,000 a year uh, after about three or four years working with them. It was not, uh, I knew, a feasible transition because I was taking less responsibility and making more money. And I knew, hey, I probably need to move on. So I actually looked for another job, found one as another IT manager making 80K. I got that offer in. I went in to give my two weeks and my bosses liked me so much that they said, hey, wait a second, let's see if we can't work out a deal here. Um, And they worked in another business. So I was able to take this other business opportunity, which they gave, and I was able to work at two businesses. They had a a good, uh, I think it was an actual spouse of the partner, and they said, hey, This would be telephony work and more Linux-based system uh, admin work or actually more uh, server admin work kind of thing where I would actually go in and work on telephony boxes, install like asterisks and things like that in CentOS environment. This was really cool because I was able to split my salary in half and split it between two businesses. So I was able to keep all the benefits of being full-time, but also get paid from two businesses. And at this point in my career, I was making 90K between both of them. And then in 2016, I got another offer. And this was from LinkedIn of all places. It just came through my messages and it was a recruiter. And he's like, hey, I've been trying to find a suitable replacement for this one job. Uh, it was an IT director position and they needed everything redone, their mail, their infrastructure, everything, but they wanted me in, in charge of this entire team. But I would have complete autonomy to change whatever needed to be changed. They just wanted everything up to date. And this was a lot of money. This is about $115,000 base with 10% KPIs, uh, a bonus based on key performance indicators. 
And I just got in here. I was super gung ho, excited. This was basically the pinnacle of my career where I basically didn't want to go any further uh, because past IT director, you could go into an executive role like a CTO or a CIO position. Um, but it was not something that really interested me as I didn't really like the management uh, side of things, even though I was definitely doing a lot of managing in the IT director position. Sure. So with all that said, if you're still stayed for this long, let's jump into the YouTube side of things because this is when I created my channel. All of 2018, I created a video every day because I wanted to get better at making videos and really figuring all of that aspect out. And it really, uh, I hit my first thousand subscribers, got monetized right at the tail end of the last couple of days of 2018. So let's start with 2019 when I started, got my first paycheck from Google to today. All right, so in 2019, you can see the very first bit of uh, revenue I got, if you look here. It was not that much. It was about, you know, anywhere between $10 and $20 a day, which is actually really solid. I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm, I'm finally doing it while also working a day job. And I was really ecstatic about this first bit. Uh, so as you see, during the entire year, I made about $24,000 which in the first year of YouTube, I thought was amazing. This is way better, way beyond whatever I was shooting for, as I thought this would take about three to four years really to build up to this point. Uh, in the fact I did it within about four months, I thought, oh man, this is, this is working better than I anticipated. But I made about 24K on 2019. And then if you fast forward to 2020, you'll see that I've already this year, we're halfway through this year and I've already made almost all of uh, both views and uh, revenue from last year. So I'm, I'm on track to do about double what I did in 2019, which is amazing. That rate of growth is far beyond anything I expected. As you see, it's been kind of steady. You know, it's not been like explosive growth, but at the same time, uh, growth nonetheless. And, you know, Hey, it's been a, a wild ride to say the least. I don't see a huge amount of growth like the early days, but at the same time, it's still growing and is growing at a really good pace. I will say, uh, a lot of people on YouTube make their money through other means. So AdSense is just one piece of it. A lot of people do product review channels and you'll see in 2019, I made about $1,000 in affiliate revenue from people clicking Amazon links or going and buying stuff through the Amazon store uh, through my recommends page on ChrisTitus.com. So if you look here, uh, as you see, we're almost up to about $900 so far this year. So on track to do probably not quite double of last year on affiliate sales, but still a steady growth. But this isn't something to where you'll just quit your day job overnight as it's coming up on two years of YouTube and between affiliate sales, uh, Patreon, uh, people actually supporting the channel. That also is another aspect of the revenue that comes in anywhere between $500 and $700 a month. So nothing really to... Uh, that'll be like, whoa, I'm a millionaire. But at the same time, it's enough to get up to the part where right now I'd probably be making around 60K a year. So as far as money goes in YouTube, it's obviously about half of what I used to make as a director. It's not great, but it's something I love doing. It's something I have an immense amount of enjoyment on. And I've been frugal enough that I could make this leap. It's very difficult when you're later in your career to make a big transition like this. But as long as you're frugal and don't acquire a ton of debt, you can do it. Uh, future potential, like let's say uh, I quit my day job, I would definitely use that time not uh, to sell my time for money, but to take that time write a book, uh, become more of a public, published author. I've done a couple, like, uh, I think I've done one uh, quick start guide over Manjaro Architect in 2019, where uh, you could actually go on Amazon, purchase that ebook and flip through and be able to install Manjaro Architect with that guide. Something like that, uh, but a little more beefy, you know, something that would go uh, dig a deep, little bit deeper than just an installation guide. So I thought, uh, this is a good start. So if you're interested uh, at any part of this, I would say I've always really enjoyed working on tech. It's a wonderful career. Uh, YouTube's really interesting 
it's just a lot of people don't realize not one source of revenue is going to make or break you, or at least for most of the people out there, as I've done about 500 videos, I've been doing it for about two years now, getting close to two years, I should say. And it's still livable, probably if you're a 20 year old, um, just on AdSense. But uh, obviously, for someone like me, that's a bit older, uh, that already has a seen season career, it's a lot difficult, uh, a lot more difficult to make that transition or that leap. Uh, but needless to say, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I'm always curious to see your thoughts. But did you expect this? As far as YouTube goes, I think it's just a slow build. It keeps growing. And as long as you keep after it for years and years and you can do that, I think uh, in the end, you could replace it as a full-time job for sure. And especially if you explore a lot of other monetization uh, avenues, I just, uh, like I said, I should probably accept more sponsors. I should be more focused on writing books and things like that. Uh, but I still just, I, I do it mainly because I love it and I love to have fun. And at the end of the day, I value happiness more than money. And that's why I do what I do. And that's what you should do because uh, I chased the money aspect and I found myself incredibly unhappy. So with all that said, let me know your thoughts and a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one and I'll see you in the next one.